I can't seem to recall the exact moment when I first met Diana. It feels like a distant memory now, clouded by the passage of time and the haziness of my recollections. But if I strain my mind hard enough, I can faintly conjure up images of a bustling city near the Rhine River in Germany. It was there, amidst the hustle and bustle, that our paths first crossed. Diana was an enigmatic figure, a woman of mystery whose family background remained shrouded in secrecy. Despite spending countless hours together, I never once learned her family name. Perhaps she purposefully kept it from me, or maybe my memory simply fails me. Nevertheless, Diana and I shared a connection that transcended such trivial details. Tall and slender, Diana possessed an ethereal beauty that defied easy description. Her movements were graceful, almost aristocratic, and her footsteps seemed to barely make a sound. When she entered a room, it was as though a gentle breeze had swept in, leaving behind a sense of calm in her wake. Her face, though not conventionally beautiful, held a mesmerizing quality that drew people in. There was an otherworldly charm to her features, a pureness that defied explanation. I often found myself lost in the depths of her large, doe-like eyes, their dark depths hinting at secrets untold. Diana was a woman of many talents. Fluent in Latin, Greek, and several other languages, she possessed a keen intellect that left me in awe. She excelled in the sciences and mathematics, effortlessly navigating complex theories and equations with ease. During our early years together, I often sought her guidance in my studies, and together we delved into the depths of academia. But as time passed, Diana's health began to decline. She grew increasingly frail, her once vibrant complexion fading to a pallid hue. Despite her illness, she fought with every ounce of her being, determined to cling to life with all her strength. I watched helplessly as she wasted away before my eyes, her once luminous spirit dimming with each passing day. Yet even in the face of death, Diana remained resolute, her unwavering determination to live on serving as a beacon of hope in the darkness. And then, one fateful night, she was gone. Despite her valiant efforts, death claimed her, leaving me bereft and alone. I wandered aimlessly for months, unable to shake the overwhelming grief that threatened to consume me. Eventually, I found solace in the quiet solitude of an old abbey nestled in the remote countryside of England. The abbey, though dark and somber, provided me with a sanctuary of sorts, a place where I could retreat from the world and mourn in peace. I filled the abbey with colorful tapestries and ornate furnishings, hoping to banish the shadows of my grief with vibrant hues and intricate designs. But try as I might, I could not escape the memories of Diana, the only woman I had ever truly loved. It was there, in the lofty tower of the abbey, that I met Lady Elena Thornfield, a woman as different from Diana as night is from day. With her golden locks and piercing blue eyes, 
she was a stark contrast to the dark beauty of my late wife. I brought Lady Elena to our new home in the Abbey, hoping that the change of scenery would bring some semblance of happiness to my fractured soul. But try as I might, I could not shake the memories of Diana that haunted me at every turn. Our marriage, though brief, was fraught with tension and unease. Lady Elena, sensing my melancholy, kept her distance, leaving me to wrestle with my demons alone. And though I longed for her companionship, I found myself unable to shake the specter of Diana that loomed over our marriage. In the early days of our marriage, Lady Elena fell ill, a mysterious ailment that left her weak and frail. She complained of strange sounds and movements in the tower, her fevered ramblings filling me with a sense of unease. I dismissed her fears as mere hallucinations, attributing them to her weakened state. But as her condition worsened, I couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister was at play. One night, as Lady Elena lay on her deathbed, I witnessed a miracle, or perhaps a curse. She stirred from her slumber, her once lifeless body showing signs of renewed vigor. But as I watched in horror, her features began to change morphing into something altogether different. Her golden locks turned as dark as midnight, her blue eyes fading to black. It was as though she had become someone, or something, else entirely. And as she moved about the room with an eerie grace, I felt a chill run down my spine. I tried to reach out to her, to grasp hold of the woman I once knew, but she eluded me, slipping through my fingers like smoke. And as I stood there, paralyzed with fear, I couldn't help but wonder, had Diana returned to me, or was this merely a trick of the mind? <laughs>